Hello, and welcome to this special edition CD from Between the Lions and Chick-fil-A. We know that you're going to enjoy listening to these stories from the PBS award-winning series, Between the Lions. On this CD, Cleo has selected her favorite stories just for you. So sit back and enjoy. Hey now, hey wow, here's how. Come and read between the lions. Come on, come in, begin. The world awaits. Between the lions, between the covers of a book, it's time to look between the lions. Behold the tales, beyond the tales, behind the door. I'm Cleo, and I'm really happy you could be here with me in the Between the Lions library. You know, I love to read all kinds of stories to my cubs, Lionel and Leona. You're about to hear some of my favorites. Maybe they'll be your favorites, too. This is a fairy tale about Lady Esther, her jester Lester, and the detestable villain Count Chester the Congested. And it is going to be read to you by the author herself, Babs Kaplan. The Quest for the Chest, written by Babs Kaplan, based upon a story by Babs Kaplan. Lady Esther and Lester the Jester were on a quest for the precious chest of Budapest. We quest for the chest, the chest of Budapest. We quest for the chest. The one that we just mentioned! <laughs> the chest of Budapest was stolen by the vilest, rottenest, most detestable villain. The evil Count Chester the Congested. Mm. <laughs> oh, Chest. You are the best, Chest. It is our destiny to be together. <laughs> All of a sudden, there was the loudest knock on the door. West, 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 west. We don't want any. I am Lady Esther, and this is my jester, Lester. And we are on a quest for the chest from Budapest. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> Just then, Lester the Jester gestured. <laughs> Gadzooks, that's it! <laughs> oh, that. We request that you give us that chest. No. <gasps> You may have the chest, if you pass a test. I shall write the word chest on a piece of paper and guest on another. If you choose the chest paper, you get the chest. Oh, boy. If you choose the guest, you will be a guest in my dungeon forever. Oh, boy. We'll take the test. Count Chester was tricky. He wrote guest on both pieces of paper, so they could not win. That one! What's it say, hmm? But Lady Esther suspected that the detestable Chester would cheat, so she cooked up a plan. She tossed the paper into the fire. Gack! Now how will we know what was written on that paper? Then... Lady Esther took the other paper from Chester's hand and read it. It said... Guest. This one says guest, so the one that I chose and threw into the fire must have said... Chest. Right? <sighs> grumble, grumble. 
she's best in me. <laughs> yes, she's right. She's right. We've got the chest. She's right. She's right. <laughs> Lady Esther had best in Chester. So she and Lester the Jester took the chest back home where it belonged. Now we got the chest, the one that we just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wanted to fly? Well, here's an old myth that comes from a country called Greece, and it's about a boy and his father who do just that. It's called the Myth of Icarus. Daedalus lived on the ancient Greek island of Crete. He could build anything. Daedalus had a son named Icarus. Icarus was not as brilliant as his father. Hey, Pop! What you doing? Inventing something? Whoa! What's this thing? Icarus, my son. I've been working on that for weeks. Be careful. Oops. One day, the king heard that Daedalus had done some work for one of the king's enemies. He was very angry. He ordered Daedalus and his son imprisoned. Get Daedalus and Icarus and bring them to the labyrinth, from which there is no escape, and fling them in! In the labyrinth lived the fierce Minotaur. The Minotaur was a scary thing. Guards took Daedalus and Icarus to the labyrinth and locked them in. Scary. Hmm. What's this? Let's see. No talking, no escaping, no reading. No, oh, I read that! I broke the rules already! Oh! Fortunately, the king forgot that Daedalus had built the labyrinth and knew how to get out. Unfortunately, the king quickly remembered it. What was I thinking? Guards! Daedalus and Icarus tried to escape. They couldn't get out by walking, for the king's guards were everywhere. They couldn't escape by sailing, for the king's ships were in the sea. How could they escape? If only we had wings! We could escape by flying! Icarus, my son, now you're thinking. What am I thinking? We'll build wings! The amazing Daedalus worked hard, sewing feathers with string. He held the wings together with wax. Ooh, sticky! Icarus, my son, cut it out! By evening, the wings were ready. Icarus began flapping. Oh, hey, look, I'm flying, I'm flying! <laughs> Daedalus gave his son a warning. Icarus, my son, be careful with your wings. If you fly too close to the water, the dampness will make them heavy. And if you fly too close to the sun, the heat will melt your wings. Are you listening to me? What's that? Oh yeah, low high, gotcha. Whee! So, the next morning, Daedalus and Icarus began their flight to freedom. Icarus, my son, follow my path. Daedalus flew a safe path between the sea and the sun. Icarus was following his father closely until he was overcome by happiness. Whoa! Woo! Hey, look, I'm flying, I'm flying! I'm so happy I could see! Icarus, my son, you're forgetting my warning! Hey, look how high I can fly! Hey. Icarus climbed Woo. higher and higher. He didn't notice that the sun was melting the wax on his wings. Icarus, your wings! They're melting! They're melting! Down Icarus plummeted into the sea. Because he didn't listen to his father's warnings, that was the end of Icarus. My next favorite story is... The Queen Who Wanted to Touch the Moon, a Caribbean folktale retold by Hootie Caboodle. There was once a queen named Una Cartoon, 
who gazed at the moon over her lagoon. What a beautiful sight! I'm going to swoon. I want to touch the moon, and I want to touch it soon. So Queen Cartoon ordered her brother and her platoons to build a tower so high it would reach to the moon. Use every box, use every chair. Start the fire right here and make it reach up to there. The Queen's brother and platoons piled everything high. It rose over the kingdom and up into the sky. The Queen climbed up, certain she'd be there soon. <gasps> oh, I should have cut back on all those macaroons. But when she got to the top, she could not touch the moon. Drat! I'm almost there. Bring up the next thing! But her servants cried out that they'd run out of stuff. Don't give me excuses! I'm not far to go! I know what will reach that big black piano! I... But... No buts! Do it! We're burning moonlight here! I want to touch the moon! I want to touch it soon! Okay? The servants were loyal, and so they obeyed. They pulled out that piano, and the whole pile swayed. Oh, this is gonna be bad. And that was the doom of Una Cartoon, the queen who wanted to touch the moon soon. The next story is a very silly folktale from Sweden about a farmer and his wife who learn to be careful what they wish for. It's called Sausage Nose. Once upon a time, on a small farm in Sweden, there lived a poor but happy couple. My dear sweet husband, we'll be home soon. And all we have for dinner is this radish. <laughs> But at least we are very, very happy. <laughs> oh, who is it? Strange old lady. Ah, come in, strange old lady. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can I borrow a radish? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. It is all we have, but you may have it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you are too kind. <laughs> In the return, I will give you three wishes. <gasps> Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> Oh, three wishes! The farmer's wife did not know what to wish for because she had always lived on her small farm and had not seen all there was to wish for in the world. Uh, I think I'll wish for a nice hot dinner for my dear sweet husband. I'll wish for a sausage. And instantly, a sausage appeared on her plate. <gasps> Wow, it works! Soon the farmer returned home. <laughs> oh, honey, I'm home! Uh, hello! hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what smells so good? Oh, a sausage! <laughs> oh. Yes, a strange old lady came mm -hmm. and gave us three wishes. And I wished for a sausage. <laughs> you wished for a sausage? Yeah. What a waste. You could have wished for anything in the world. But, but it looks like a very good sausage. The farmer was very angry. Fooey, you blew it. I wish the sausage was on your nose. No sooner had the words passed his lips when the sausage leapt off the plate and stuck itself on the end of the poor woman's nose. Ah! Oh, now look what you've done. You blew it. Even worse than I did. 
did. And we wasted another wish, and now I have a sausage on my nose. The farmer and his wife had used up two wishes and had only one wish left. Oh, I'm so sorry. And we have only one wish left. We should wish for something like a castle of gold. Oh, but I will still have a sausage on my nose. <laughs> oh, what shall we wish for? You decide. No, my sweet, you decide. No, you. No, you. <laughs> no, you. No, you. No, you. 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 No, you. Oh, you. No. I know. What? We can go to the library. Maybe they can help us. Oh, yeah. And it's free. Ah, yeah. Ooh. So the farmer and his wife went to the library and spent the rest of the day looking at books, magazines, and catalogs with all kinds of pictures of all the wonderful things they could wish for. Sweet home. Oh, you can say that again. Home, sweet home. It's an expression, Poopsie. Yeah. yeah. So, are you ready for my wish? Whatever your heart desires, wish away. I wish. I wish that this sausage be removed from my nose onto this plate. In the kitchen of our new castle. Filled with boxes of jewelry for you. (gasps) (laughs) And sports cars for you. And beautiful eyes. The same sausage that was on your nose? Yeah. No, thank you. A radish will be just fine for me, Poopsie. <laughs> and the farmer and his wife lived happily ever after. Thanks for visiting the Between the Lions Library. If you liked the stories you heard and would like to hear more wonderful stories, well, ask your mom, dad, grandparent, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, cousin, neighbor, babysitter, or any good reader you know to be your designated reader and read to you every day. And don't forget to watch me, Theo, Lionel, and Leona every weekday on Between the Lions, the show that helps kids learn how to read. You'll find us on PBS. Check your local listings for the exact time. See you in the library! We hope you've enjoyed listening to this collection of special stories. And don't forget to collect all four Between the Lions CDs at Chick-fil-A.